you know, when people say to you, well, don't you think this should have happened by now in your life? And don't you think you should be doing this by now? It's like, no, if I was meant to be doing that by now, I would be doing that right now. You know, um... <laughs> Folks, I'm beyond excited to be bringing on my next immensely talented and humble guest. He played the role of Quay Tolsite in the solo movie Crescentis, Cr Cr I think I'm saying that right, is Star Wars Force Awakens. He does the mocap for CAD 6 and Destiny 2 Forsaken. He's a talented musician and just one of the most positive and sweet guys on the internet. Can I please get a rounding rise of applause for the amazingly talented, humble, and one of the best guys around, D Tails. What an intro. Bless you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, look look at your background. Look how spectacular background. I'm actually having some decorating done right now. So this is the best that I could do. But I thought, you know what? You know what? We, we might be able to handle a bit of cake. <laughs> right. Yeah. No. Uh, my room, there, there's a room right now that's getting redone uh, for, for me. So um, we're just, I'm about to take all this stuff down and move it to the other room and have a new, whole new setup for, for my interviews. So it's going to be really fun to show that off because I got a new room now. But I've got ring light in my glasses. I've got to keep my head down. All right. <laughs> keep my eyes up. All right. Yeah. Okay. Well, before I get into the questions, I was just like to say, I'm just so glad and humbled and honored to be able to be speaking to you today. I'm a huge fan of your work and is of you as a person. You're just so positive and just have a really nice light about you that rubs off on everything you do. So I'm just truly excited to be speaking to you today. So thank you so much for giving me some of your time. I know it's pretty late in the UK, so thank you so much <laughs> no, for spending time with it's, it's, it's not too bad. It's not too bad. It's just after seven. It's just after seven in the evening here. Um, Bless you, thank you so much for even wanting to speak to me. You know, um, anybody who's interested in this stuff, I'm ha more than happy to speak to. And, I'll, and I've been checking out some of your, your, your posts on YouTube as well. You know, oh. some of the people you've been speaking to, I'm like, oh my, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> It's truly crazy. Like I've spoken to like 80 plus people from, you know, Corey Burton who played Cad Bane in Book of Boba Fett or the end of the cartoons, if you know him, or Steve Bloom yeah. or Roger Kirk Smith or David Kay or Royce Johnson from the Daredevil show. Like it's just been so amazing to like build these people. Yeah, just keep going. Just keep going with that list. It's, <laughs> it's, like, it's like, yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I just I just can't wait to grow it some more. It's just been so fun getting to add people like you. And I really want to diversify these interviews with people like you who do behind the scenes or on camera actors who do primarily on camera work or like musicians. Because, you know, I just really want this to be an all encompassing like pop pop culture hub you know what i mean just like everyone's here you know you can find the greats great great of the greats they're gonna get there one day they were gonna get there one day <laughs> you know yeah so i've just really primarily done voice acting so it's really awesome and refreshing to you know bring a new face on so i'm really glad to be speaking to you man thank you very much thank you very much absolutely well some things some fans might not know about you is that the first time you were introduced to Star Wars is not through the movies. It's actually in the behind the scenes versions of Empire Strikes Back. So talk about that a little bit. Yeah, um, as, a, as a kid, I grew up watching Sesame Street. I used to love Sesame Street and, and Grover and Kermit the Geist and, and things like that. And, um, and the Muppet Show. And one Saturday morning after Sesame Street, um, I'm not sure what part, time of the day it was. I know it was after Sesame Street, but the behind the scenes for some films used to come on and some of them were interesting. I remember seeing the behind the scenes for Dune and just thinking, I'm just thinking, wow, wow. I, I didn't know who these people were. I knew who Sting was. I knew, who, everybody knew who Sting was, right? <laughs> but um, didn't know anything about it. And then um, I just got into the habit of watching those, um, whether I understood what was going on or not. And then, um, I saw this one episode and it was about some blonde headed dude in some vest and he's in some swamp and this he's talking to some toad with big ears and stuff and <laughs> you know that's Grover 2.0, Grover 2.0. Almost gone so, almost gone so um, without a nose. But it's you know, it it was none of that. It was interesting. It was interesting, and then they started talking about the guy who was who made this 
this um, this creature. And then I'm like, okay, so it's a, it's a puppet and some guys there. I had no context. The only context I had for an adult with, with Muppets was on the Muppet show or on Sesame Street. Not in a movie, <laughs> right? Not on, not on TV like that. And um, as they got further into it, they started talking about Jim Henson and talking about the Muppets and, and Frank Oz. And I'm like, hey, I'm like, Oh, I know though, I know. And then they brought Miss Piggy on set and Kermit. I'm like, now I'm like this. Now I'm just like this. I'm just like, what's going on? What's going on? What's, what's, you know? And then um, uh, the more, and, and that was it. Because I, I, I wasn't really one of those those kids that went to the cinema regularly or, or for those big events, you know? Um, my cinema was watching Buck Rogers on TV and. That was like Galactica, you know, <laughs> you know, and even even the black and white Flash Gordon or something like that. But um, uh, rerun. Um, but this was something else. And then there was some. Then uh, maybe a little while later, there was um, another one on, or the same one. I think it was another one that came on in the evening because it was either celebrating the movie because it come out or before I had no con no um, understanding of time of it or if it, even if it was in the cinema and I saw lightsabers I'm like okay and then the green dude came back and I'm like oh I'm like okay cool but it, it was like he added validation to um, what I understood as a child and he was a very instructive wise you know, riddlesome, if that's a word. Yeah, <laughs> kind, yeah. of, kind, of, kind of character, you know? And so I kind of gravitated to that in that regard. Um, and then later on, I've got toys and stickers and things like that. And I hadn't even seen the movie. I was just making up my own thing, you know? Just play, and the Spider-Man was there and Superman was there. They were all having a ready for a detailed Star Wars movie now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you're complaining now, woo! <laughs> <laughs> so so yeah that was that was my thing so i was really big into behind the scenes and this was all before i even knew i wanted to be an actor you know i didn't know until i was about 10 that i could remember lines you know and i could be funny on stage or something you know um and so i had never really balanced the two together and the two didn't really come together until my first day on set with on force awakens and i'm i'm backstage and i might know one or two faces but everyone's friendly everyone's saying hi whatever and it's really submersive it's because yeah you're all doing creatures my creature looks like this yours one of those types of things and you saw other people statures and heights and sizes inside big things small things or whatever and i'm like this looks like that behind the scenes stuff that i used to see on tv but I'm actually stood here, you know? So it took a moment, you know, I was, I was kind of on autopilot. I was saying hi to everybody and, and, and be polite and everything while my eyes are doing this. <laughs> don't forget this, D, don't, don't forget that. <laughs> you know, um, surreal doesn't quite cover it. You know, uh, there are more serendipitous magical moments with, I, I think, a f quite a few of us who were involved in Star Wars and maybe for other people in other franchises, but yeah, the moments just keep coming. They just keep happening. I mean, you've been on a ton of stuff. You've been on The Force Awakens, Rogue One, Solo, The Last Jedi. I mean, some of these, these Star Wars films are so impressive with their use of practical effects and animatronics. I mean, you talk about Frank Oz, but I mean, even the droids are like, what, like, like BB-8, for example, like an R2D, like how do they do that stuff? Like how you get, or, or Ewoks or just all of these things that are, are practical. It's just like, what is this? Like what type of world is this? I don't know. It's just like Star Wars is really unparalleled in that way of how they use practical effects. I mean, even with the TV shows, we're seeing them use like a, a half of a rancor for the Book of Boba Fett and like the other half is like, um cgi is, is digital it's really insane how star wars is yeah so but, but it's 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 everything that inspired george you know um from um the roots of storytelling which which you can submerge yourself into with um a hero with a thousand faces you know um 
that structure is placed in space. You know, um, uh, J.R. Tolkien based it in some magical fairy, fairy land, you know, um, J.K. Rowling, you know, Hogwarts, you know, it's, it's just, it's where you said it, but it's where it comes from. You know, all of those things from what the content is from spiritualism to um, family, to those journeys, you know, um, of discovery of self and, and um, how much more there is to you than you actually can perceive. You just need to be put in that moment, <laughs> you know, you know, where it's just like make or break, man, do I sink or swim? And, it, and you don't realize the, the power that you have just from making those choices. You know, all of those things come from um, real, real internal experiences that are then embellished into these stories and, and these, these magnificent things. You know, from the visual aspect, man, I'm, I'm loving like um, Ray Harryhausen, you know, I'm, I'm just loving that. You know, as a kid, you watch that and you take it in. Why? Because adults are, are doing that. If adults are, okay, I'll t okay, all right. <laughs> all right, he's fighting, he's fighting skeletons. And, and the sword is going through them. So why are you, okay, but it looks good, you know? And then you've got this big, big um, cyclops and he's, he's moving all sticky and stuff, but it's beautiful, you know? It's just absolutely beautiful. It should look out of place. It should look wrong, but it looks so, could look so right, you know? Um, so you have that aspect. And then George says, you know, Empire Strikes Back, I'm gonna put in Dee's favorite shot. He doesn't know this yet, but it'll be Dee's favorite shot. It'll be Han Solo and Luke Skywalker riding on Tauntauns. But it'll be stop motion. Ray Harryhausen, you know? And, and then you've got, you've got puppets in there. Of course, you know, um, then you've got people in creature suits, people in droid suits, you know? And then it moves on because time is moving on in terms of what we're able to create. So now you've got CGI, you know? And then you've got CGI masses, CGI crowds and CGI, you know, huts you know, bearing down their heavy weight on, on people that need to carry them through the streets, <laughs> you know? <laughs> but it's just, you know, how, you know, every time you watch it or every time I watch it, I'm, I'm 12 again. I'm 12 again. And that's why, you know, I, I just lap it up. I just lap it up, you know? Um, you see things that migrate you and you think, well, as an adult, you think, ugh, ugh, I, like, hang on, D, you go back to bed. I'm sitting here like this. And, and, and one of the most powerful things also when it talks about family, it talks about those kinds of connections. You know, I've never cried as much as I have through a film or through any TV series than I have done um, following um, The Mandalorian. You know, um, season two. I was in pits, I was in bits, and, and he gets me every single time. He, you know, he gets me, you know, like, like it was it in um, book, the Book of Boba Fett and he's, he's there, he wants to see Grogu and um, Ahsoka's there, you know, and he says, I came all this way, he's right there. I've got goosebumps now, goosebumps. I'm just like, <laughs> you know, how can you not feel that? You know, um, yeah, I, I've, I've not witnessed anything like that in my entire life and to have and to be like a tiny little cog <laughs> you know or, or a bit of dirt underneath someone's shoe just being this thing you know it's you know it's, it's a beautiful thing um and a thing that you always want as a kid but you never quite know what it is that you want until it's right there you know so it's yeah big moments big moments constantly constantly pinching myself you know constantly looking back um yeah, I should shut up and let you just ask me some stuff, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, keep going. No, because I completely agree. I mean, physical is really just like dominates over CGI. I mean, just when you know it's there, you watch it behind the scenes and you see a guy with like his hand behind the head and it's actually the head. And it's just, it brings such a sense of realism when you can tell it's like physical and you can actually touch. It's just so amazing. Check this, check this. So, so I'm a fan of the Muppets, yeah? Half of these guys have worked with Jim Henson, <laughs> right? These guys are freaking geniuses, yeah? Um, Matt, I'm, I, I keep telling the story because I, I don't know how else to try and convey it to people, how this feels. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
um, on solo. I'm back. Um, I'm on the other side of the set where they're shooting the Sabac or whatever. And Matt Denton's putting some BBH together to send to LA and because it teaches people how to use them and all this type of stuff, or whatever. And I'm sitting there and he's telling me the mechanics and it's just going, <laughs> but I have no idea what he's talking about. Yeah. But then afterwards, I'm like, <clears throat> it's really, really cool. It's amazing how it, how it works and stuff like that or whatever. You know, and then I go off, I walk away to go to craft and grab some snacks or something like that. Next thing you know, BB-8 is rolling beside me. He's looking up at me and he's going, Bew. right. <clears throat> I'm not looking at Matt over there. I'm looking at this little puppy thing right here because it takes a certain level of skill and understanding to convey that cuteness or to convey any type of emotion through these, these things that, you know, Harrison, you know, Han Solo calls a boar. <laughs> it's just a boar, <laughs> you know? Um, but it's not a boar, it's bb you know? Um, and it's the same thing with R2. It's the same thing with any of the creatures. It's, it's weird because sometimes you'll be like, um, I'll be sat there. I remember on, uh, yeah, I remember on, on The Force Awakens, we were all getting ready to do Maz's castle. So I'm seeing um, people from CFX. I'm seeing some of the supporting cast wearing some stuff and makeup and all this stuff. You know, and I'm seeing these cute little fuzzy dudes, you know, that look like um, minions, but they got two eyes, you know, I'm seeing them. I'm like, oh, this is really cute, right? And I know it's going to be a second in, in the shot, but then he takes the head off and it's Annabelle Davis, you know, um, Warwick Davis's daughter. And it's like, oh, that's why it was so cute. Oh, bless you. I didn't know you were in there. You know, it's, 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 it's really, really, it's a strange world, CFX. You know, we have the best time. And um, the things that we get to do, the things we get to wear are extraordinary. They are made by the most amazing designers, you know, and wardrobe, you know, and even the concept artists, you know. So I'm stood there, so I'm with these guys that can do all this puppeting stuff or whatever and um, give me as much advice as they can, you know. and. And I'm there with the guys who can do the animatronics for the face. So it's not just the droids, it's the animatronics for the face. And when they stood there, they have the faces. They can put the face on the table. And as they're moving the face, they start moving their face, moving it around, doing what they're doing. And it's unbelievable. You know, so I am, while I'm blessed <laughs> to be on the screen, you know, I, I remember every single face. May not know if you remember every single name, but I remember every single face that I encountered in terms of making this outfit involved with this prop, you know. Um, oh, and, then, and then the people that you meet. You know, I met you on Star Wars. That's how we met. How can you say that? Who says that? You know, it's, it's just, it's, yeah. It's a magical world, man. It's a magical world. <laughs> that... What has been like, you've been in so many projects from Batman Begins to Destiny to Star Wars, is doing a lot of the behind the scenes work and such like that. What has been the most rewarding part about doing all the behind the scenes and seeing people work and, and making these puppets or these droids or these creatures or just helping enhance the scene in any way they can? Um, the most amazing thing that happens to me when I'm when I'm in that scenario um, is uh, the immense amount of gratitude and it's not I don't it's it's it's, it's an undirected gratitude because I'm grateful for everything that it took to get me here everything that I persevered through to get me here everything that that someone someone I don't even know has gone through to get them there to give their hundred percent um, and it's that feeling that every time I get that call, Lucasfilm are saying, um, D, you have something to contribute to this, you know? And I've spent years as an, as an, as an actor doing some, some great roles, um, some quiet roles, some, some terrible roles and things like that, you know? Um, and there is an immense amount of truth to why Idris Elba moved to America. You know, it's very, very difficult over here. Um, uh, so 
in being able to perceive, no, no, it's not, no um, to be able to have the patience, yeah, um, and know that what it is that you want to achieve is worth every ounce of pain that you're going through, um, and that you have this inner knowledge of having the last laugh of over every inflicting, um, agonizing, excruciating, um, emotional um, uh, pain that you might be going through. Yeah, it's all going to be worth it because even though, you know, you never, you never know, but you, you must know if that's where you're headed, right? But you may not even get there, but the journey you've taken to persevere because you've had this in your sights, you know, maybe the only reason why you persevered, why you've, why you've gotten that far. Um, and to be in the position where you look around and you can see not just yours, but every other person, well, not every other person, but, but quite a few people, you can see their dreams literally unfolding in front of their eyes. You know, there are people that work that have no affiliation to Star Wars on some of these projects, you know, and um, and some of them are very, very eager to know more, like understanding what's going on and and get a big surprise when they see it on the screen as well. So, oh, so that's how it all fits in. Oh, yeah, but what about this? What about that? Yeah. Oh, you got to watch that movie. Yeah. So, and they go through that. And then some people, it's just a job, you know, they're going from one job to another and it's just that cycle or whatever. But for the majority who flow through that entire process, there's an understanding. There's like, yeah, 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 yeah we got this, y you, you know, and and it and it shows. I've seen them put. Um, it happens to me. It happens to me. But you know, um, I'll I'll, 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 I'll mention one of my friends, um, Keith the Winter. I've seen him put on some some massive suits for Canto Bites. You know, I can't remember the names of them. You know, put on some, some massive suits. Um, in a tuxedo and things like that. And we're, we're all taken to the set and um, it's a roulette table, you know, and when they start rehearsing and saying, and go, as long as you're in the right position, all it is is and go. They don't say, right, now I want you to act like um, you're, you're offended or like you're excited by this role. No, you just do it. You just do it and you see, I, I, you know, I can watch them and I can see the energy, you know, that he spreads. And then I'm understanding that's what everybody's doing as a creature, as a droid, you know, even if it's taking part in an actual scene, you know, and things like that, there is a presence and a composure to wearing this stuff because people can get claustrophobic, people can lose their minds, people can faint and things like that. Um, we were in Savarine, we, I say, we were in Savarine, which was in Spain, right, for, for Solo. And um, they were dressing up the locals and I had on Regineer Teed's head. He's got like this lizard head. Um, you see, it's the same head. You saw it in the Mandalorian episode one, season two. Someone at the fighting ring, someone, they, were, they were cheering. That's that head, right? Amazing, right? So, so, you know, I'm wearing that. You know, I've got layers on. I've got a tube in my mouth um, so that I can, I can breathe so I don't steam up my eyes as much. Um, there's mesh under there so I can breathe. A little bit of a gap so I can, I can breathe bless you bless you right <laughs> and these tiny little pinholes things right and so i've got a stupid man off that goes out the back so i can breathe right i'm stood there and um production come through to check out the costumes and everything like that and then while i'm stood there one of the extras faints because it was ba it was really hot right and now i'm covered in all of this stuff and i'm like yeah, it's tough all around. It's tough all around. And, you know, if, if, the, if the locals are passing out, then you, if you're not from that place, you just have this, there's natural understanding about how to survive in a suit. And luckily the people that, that are around you, like the carers, like um, I've, had, I've had people at Cheeky and, um, and Serena, people that looking after me or whatever, but every 20 minutes they come and they'll offer you some water and uh, and some air whether it's a fan or it's down the suit or up suit whatever it is you know um so it's i don't know i think i think it adds to the charm man because it's such hard work it's such a, it adds to the charm if you can survive that and pull off a performance <laughs> you know wow. but um but yeah it's it 
it's you could it, it's a multitude of moments it's a multitude of moments that i'm always recording yeah i'm always recording in my head because it's a, it's it's something that i'll never forget because i don't want to forget it you know um and like like for example after doing solo and playing quetol side right um that's great as well was and it's still stars and whatever you know and then the, the, you know the fans are uh, divisive over what it is they want to watch what it is they don't want to watch or whatever reasons that they have and things like that and so you're never quite sure what's going to remain canon <laughs> you know and um lo and behold you know they you know they in doing what they do they gave me a gift which was in the um validation of quetol side you know with how the pikes looked and all those types of things and i'm like wow okay okay they didn't they didn't go another way you know they expanded on that look they made it elaborate quay has a specific look because of the um toxic at- atmosphere so those those pipes they they spew out all that slime and stuff so um but that's what i mean about it still giving you know and, I, and I, i'm not even in la you know and it's like yeah i want to be there i want to be there you know but i'm not even over there and and it's it's sending waves you know and and i think about all those people that have always wanted a story of boba fett you know and now they've got a back story that can always be dipped into you know and a season that's now finished which means he can now go and kick booty <laughs> he can go and kick space booty elsewhere you know it's just it just expands it just just keeps growing and yeah yeah i should shut up yeah <laughs> no 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 please keep going no i i love it i love your enthusiasm for your line of work and for just like the franchises that you've been a part of i mean you don't really see that from a lot of people you know sometimes cuz you know you're right sometimes it is just a job but sometimes you also just don't see the passion as as much as you think they'd have but i just with you you see it baby it's there it's front screen is popping it's, popping <laughs> it's off the chain the energy is it, it's coming off i know you love working on these projects so i love it man i really do but it's 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 the it's the give back it's the give back you know um it's to, it was never a dream to be in star wars because i couldn't picture myself as anybody in star wars You know, I never pretended I was La- a Lando. There was already Lando. You know, I thought, well, <clears throat> if I was there, maybe maybe I'll be one of the rebels and I'll be helping out the Jedi or doing something. You know, but I never had those types of people I wanted to be, you know. Um and I think I realized that in the playground when we were playing Super Friends or something. And I put my jacket on and said, "Oh, I'm Batman." And I put my jacket on, top button up, everything else like a cape. And I'm like that man don't really look like this does he <laughs> you know and then but you play it out it still pretend you play it out but you know there's something missing you know kids today they've got these costumes they can be dressed up by their, the parents can make them costumes it's all there you know um but for me no it wasn't anything like that so all i wanted to do was be in george lucas or or, or um steven spielberg movies because of the epic blockbuster heartwarming films that they kept pouring out that um like I would go, like the family would take me to go and see ET or something like that you know amazing things like that and you're just like wow you know and then when you realize you sit there and you realize actually those people on TV they can't actually see me they're actually pretending that's what I do in the playground and then the, and then, and then things start working and then you start looking at types of roles and and things you want to be in and all I could think about was I just want to be in movies I just want to be in blockbuster movies because of that feeling that they used to give me you know I I'd even be the cab driver you know don't give me any lines you know um I'm not like that now you got to give me lines now but um <laughs> you know <laughs> but but it was you know like superman i spoke about this before superman you know I'm watching superman and um he he spin Clark Kent goes into into the into the uh what's it that that spot that spinning door yeah the spinning door oh yeah the yeah, telephone where he like yeah, goes in the, yeah that's it and, you know and Lois Lane is hanging from up there and then as he comes out some pimp says to me says to him, ooh wee that's a bad outfit i was like i want to do that <laughs> yeah from a kid i want to do that you know um because he got to speak 
to Superman. And it was a damn cool scene, <laughs> you know? Um, I've got to find out who that dude was. I think he's a legend. I think he's a legend. Um, but things like that, you know, and nobody else around you is talking like that. Nobody else around you is talking this, you know, I want to work for this company. I want to do this. I want to be this. I want to do that, whatever. No one wants this, you know? Um, so it's a lonely place because then when you say this is what you want to do, say, say, some people say to you, but what do you want your real job to be? Do you know? Um, and, oh, oh yeah, my friend's an actor, blah, blah, blah. And they'll brag about their friends being actors and they're doing really cool stuff. And it's, oh, so what you been doing? Well, I'm just trying to get a cast in, man. I'm just trying to be seen, <laughs> you know? <laughs> you know, it's, it's a very, very tough place. And then, and then, you know, once you find yourself there, how can you contain that joy? How can you contain that self-validation that, you know, you were right, you know, you did want to do these things, you did want to work with George Lucas, you did want to be you work with Spielberg, you know. Couldn't figure out how I was going to get into Star Wars, if they were going to make any, from the prequels to the new ones or anything like that. Um, and then it slowly starts dawning, well, maybe it's not Star Wars you want to work for, maybe it's kind of like Lucasfilm, you know, maybe it's a big studio you want to work for, maybe. And it starts to grow from there, you know, but to find yourself here, um, it's, it's very, very humbling. It's, you know. I can only imagine. Well, but dude, explain, explain this to me. Okay. How did you get into doing this? To these, to interviews? Yeah. Um, what, what, what sparked your interest? Why did you do it? Why did I do it? That's, uh, okay, so um, I started this 2020. Well, I started around March, and that was because I'm a huge Linkin Park fan. I love that band, Chester Bennington, Mike Shinoda, all of them. Um, I love I love that band so much. And of course, Chester Bennington passed away in 2017. So his yeah. first band were coming out with a posthumous album for um, the songs that he did with them first, because Grey Days was Chester Bennington's first band before Linkin Park. So they were releasing old right. songs that they've redone and we're going to release. And a random thought came to me with it, I, where, like, you should ask to interview one of the bandmates. And I was like, that's the dumbest thing I've ever said. And I say a lot of dumb things. <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> and, and I was just like, well, all right, I guess. And I reached out to them and they were like, Oh, okay. Well, no, no, no. When we not no, we already have videos on our YouTube. And I was like, okay. Well, I didn't want to like make a video thing. I went to interview them, and, and they said, hmm. All right, cool. So we're gonna give you the bass player of the band, and it's just been a it's been a spiral ever since. Like I've interviewed some, like I said, almost eighty plus people. Like, I mean, I've interviewed people from anime to video games, to animation, to people like you with the behind the so scenes. So see, so basically you're, you, you've been able to target those things that inspire you, those things that you enjoy. Yes. Right? You've been able to, but it took that leap, right? That leap, that very lonely, scary leap that only you can make if you actually believe in what it is that you truly want to do. You know, um, and it's not, it's not always easy. It's not always as simple as, as me saying words like that, you know, um, but it's, it's that, that uh, the challenge, the challenge is, is, is finding your way through that journey, you know, and not letting anything or anyone who doesn't understand that, who's not in there, you know, dissuade you. You know, if, if you change your mind under your, um, and your own, based on your own choices, what, from what you realize, then fine. Yeah, but if someone says, "No, nah, I wouldn't do that if I were you," yeah, 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 why? Because it's not you something you want to do. You know, it, and and that's the question. You know, and you ask yourself, well, how much do I really want to do this? You know, um, and it's yeah. Sometimes it's it's you don't even have time to answer it. Your body's just saying, "Oh, we going." <laughs> yeah, <You know? laughs> yep. but but see that's that's what it took and and look it's just opened up this avenue you're not restricted to who you interview 
you're not restricted to what type of, of um, departments they work for, what, what they actually do as far as production, or if they're a part of production, it's limitless. Yeah, and it's limitless because only you can set the limit and you ain't setting no limit. <laughs> Absolutely not. Um, but, you know, I found something interesting about the entertainment industry because I myself, I'm trying to get into it, you know, doing a couple of acting things here. I'm writing scripts now, music. I just I just love my creative thoughts. I love to let my ideas ruminate and grow and, and fertilize yeah. them and make them into something. I'm just in, it's crazy how people have said the entertainment industry has like changed them, you know, has like helped them look at the world in a different view or has helped them become more, uh, more emotionally available through the work that they do. So how would you personally say that the entertainment industry and these grand stories have really changed your view of the world? Oh, my view. Oh, wow. <laughs> It was like, yeah, I was with you until you said, of the world, man. I was like, oh, dang. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> um, I do, it, it doesn't change so much my view of the world as it changes um, my perception of who I am in it. You know, there's so much going on in the world that's always been going on in the world. Um, like, I always, like, I know how tough it is in the acting industry, you know, um, but my mission isn't to get into the industry to change it. You know, my my mission was to survive it. You know, um, uh, you know whether that's making a survival survivable amount of money or whether that's having a survivable amount of, of acting roles that will get you more, get you those roles and get you paid and things like that. Um, because we don't get like weekly checks unless we're working or monthly checks unless we're actually working, right? Um, and there may be some royalties and things like that coming through, but it's it's just about how I learned just from watching how 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 to conduct myself in 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 the arena while I'm working because I've wanted so for so many years to actually be able to do this, you know, um, and not necessarily as a creature performer. I never set out to be a creature performer, yeah? And it just so happens that <laughs> I, I studied physical, physical movement at, at college. Um, I watched Star Wars. I, I get it, yeah? I'm, I'm a trained actor, you know? I'll, I'll pretend like I'm in one of those suits for, for a casting or being a role or something like that. You know, um, there won't be much difference from that once I'm in the suit. I've, I've done Shakespeare on stage. I've done pantomimes you know christmas pantomimes on stage christmas shows and things like that as fantasy characters so i know about projection i know about how much to give when you're on a stage and how much not to give when you're in front of the camera even though they keep that's like oh, a little bit less a little bit less you know um and things like that or more energy you know um they'll, they'll fire those things but it's not generally a thing that that happens within that's happened to me too much within this creature world. You know, I kind of fell into it when we just finished for filming um, The Force Awakens. And, you know, that wasn't, I was just, yeah, Neil would like to see you, blah, you know, just one of those things, right? One of those things, right? And and um, and before that, that movie came out, ITV, a British broadcasting network in the UK, um, wanted um, a creature performer for one of their roles in Jekyll and Hyde. And, you know, um, they knew that I was working on, I've been working on Star Wars. And that's all they knew, you know? And so I think just in case they thought, oh yeah, what if he's got a really big role? <laughs> you know, let's have him. You know, I got to, I got to, um, I got to shine on that show. I worked hard on my, on my audition and things like that. Um, and I don't know if this will help any actors and things like that, but when I went into the audition, uh, the table was set there, long table. Um, window had blinds for the hallway and things like that, for privacy, had a little camera on the table. And they said, right, because it's just going to be your head and we're going to CGI this this body to the rest. We just want to film you um, saying, the, saying, the, saying your dialogue. 
I was like, okay. I wore a black shirt, so I pulled up the collars. And um, I asked them if they could just leave that light on and pull the curtains and shut the blinds. Um, and he was able to do as much as he could, but I was able to direct my own, my own casting for, for his benefit. So when he said action, I could lean into the light and the light would just light up that face and that monstrous face or whatever, <laughs> you know, and, um, uh, and I could deliver it. And what I put into that, that's what they had me do once they told me I had the part. You know, um, and that was the first. That I, I guess that was the I guess that was the first, my first terrestrial broadcasting um, appearance um, on stage. I played um, a cat, you know, with an afro with little white ears, you know, face like Sylvester, little red vest, white gloves, black and white tail, spats on. He had a strut. Dude knew how to strut. <laughs> you know and he, he spoke like donkey from shrek and he was just beautiful um and that was my first on stage then harbinger was my first on tv and then what followed that was oh kratinus that's how you say his name kratinus from um uh yeah, maz's you know. castle okay because i didn't you know. know i'm sorry i had no idea that's okay that. <laughs> that's okay that's okay but but that was um and then that was the start of that, that relationship with people that I work with as creature performers and crew and wardrobe, as well as the CFX team itself and, and Neil Scanlon's team, man. Because, you know, I, I owe everything to them at the moment um, as far as Creature Eyes is concerned. They just, they, they, they got my number, man. They just said, oh, D can do that. Oh, D can do that. You know, this is nice. You've had, you've had started a bunch of big projects and have started things i've told grand stories and i we got to get into lucasfilm got to get into so that's one of my all-time favorite star wars movies is solo i i, I oh love fantastic such such, fantastic. A, such a great fun movie and seeing uh Kui on on the screen was so quay 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 on the screen quay yes. on the screen uh quay tulsa was so cool because that's the first time we've seen a pike and live action, and as someone who grew up watching the Clone Wars, that was just like, yeah, 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 yeah. What the heck, that was so cool. And um, it's just really awesome that you were the first. Like, also, how does it feel to be the first live action Pike now that we have Book of Boba Fett out? Well, that's what I mean. That's what I mean. When Book of Boba came out and and showed you that that is indeed what we look like, you know. It, where do, where do you where do you find the words? I'm just like, was that a pipe? Was that on, on that on that on that speed? Of, was that? Hang on, was that a shell? What? What? Hang on, wait. Then then they, they appear, and then and the dude is wearing the outfit, the the, the charcoal and 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 mustard, and um, and then Phil Moore is doing the voice. Oh my God, Phil Moore, you know. We're, we're related now, <laughs> you know? Oh, you got to get Phil on your show. you got to get Phil on your show. If you can um, get him for me, I'll bring him on. <laughs> hey, what did I tell you about taking that leap? <laughs> I, I, look, I, I would love to speak. He's been in so much. Uh, love to speak to him. Yeah, great guy. Great, yeah, but great but talent. All of that, all of that on top of Star Wars, all of that on top of... Boba Fett, all of that on top of everything else that encompasses that show. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm lost. I'm lost for words. It's, it's still too fresh. The season's finished, but it's still too too fresh for me to actually um, be able to deal with that. You know, I already run the Spice Mines of Kessel. <laughs> you know, um, I already have my, my, my butt handed to me by the Mother Dragons. You know, um, I could go on, brother. I could go on. <laughs> you know? But 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 it's yeah, yeah. They, they they those thoughts kind of periodically cycle through my head and I just catch myself and it's just you know, it's it's so reaffirming to know that I've left something. I've contributed something. You know, um of of great significance to me 
you know, and I love, I love fairy tales. I lo like, we're talking about Hero of a Thousand Faces. I love the origins of fairy tales and things like that. And to be a part of one of the ultimate fairy tales that will be ongoing and ongoing. I can see it going on and on and on, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, whether I'm attached here or not or, or whatever, you know, but I think, yeah, I think that I'm not, I'm not so much of that frame of mind where I need to be an actor seeing my face now, or I need to be in Bad Boys 4. <laughs> you know, I, I, I love being Bad Boys, but you know, I, you know, it's, it's, it's more than that now. I, I can, I can be several characters in one film. You know, um, you played like two in solo, like you said, you played the pike and then you played another lizard. I played creature. three, I think I played three in solo. I played wow. a bottle right with my counterpart who played Prashi in like Pratness of Prashi. Um, played two gotter rights in the solo um bar. They're like moles, they, uh, they don't look like a mole, they're not the moles on your faces, they're moles that grow on the ground, right? <laughs> you have know, these big ugly teeth. We're standing there in these spacesuits and we're drinking and, and swaying or whatever. So there's those two, then there's Virginia Teed, and then there was um Quay, then there was Quay. But, but so Solo was was an absolute epic and a joy to film, you know, um, throughout the entirety of it. You know, I, I got to be directed by Ron Howard. Um, you know, um, I got to meet John Kasdan, you know, oh, s such a bright mind, man. And you're writing and the, and the mind is just there. And seeing him communicate with Ron Howard is just like, it's like a secret language, but it's just, yeah, is that right? Yeah, that, they were both in sync. It was just like, okay, you know, it's like, you know, and like I said, Sesame Street and what used to come after Sesame Street was Happy Days, you know, and um, um, everyone else on set is freaking out. That's Ron Howard. He directed this, he directed that. And I'm like, dude was in the farms. <laughs> yeah, I'm, and, and, and my childhood is right there. And this is what I mean about these moments. And all of this is taking place while we're stood in front of the Millennium Falcon. See, goosebumps, goosebumps. See, it, it, see, that's you know, that's 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 what my life is—a <laughs> goosebump, <laughs> right? <laughs> how did you get into the Lucasfilm world? Like, how did you get to be in the Force Awakens and start just this? journey of doing these being behind the droids and, and puppets and creatures and stuff the the journey the journey is for me doesn't doesn't kind of start until i talk about my band yeah i used to be a band called emanate we toured with jan jackson they remix um we have remixes from uh og from montel jordan we had remixes from joe to see um, I had a lot of love from Joe Dissy. Um And we are the UK's biggest selling all male black boy band of the 90s. You know, um, and there are a multitude of awesome bands that, that were there with us and followed after us and whatever. But even while doing that, you know, yeah. Even while doing that and getting on the soundtrack to Bad Boys, the first movie, you know, um, you know, and then Janet Jackson says, you know, Emanate, uh, that's, that's the only band I want to support me throughout Europe. When I mean, she was going for three, you know. Um, what the see, 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, 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 so all of these things and always wanted to be an actor. I thought, well, what if I'm, what if we're touring? Well, maybe I could, maybe it'd be cool if I miss a tour and they say, our oh, D can't be with us because he's filming whatever he's filming, you know, I'm thinking, okay, cool. That might be cool. You know, um, but everything that we did as a band, um, name, name checks for G-Man, KG, you know, and Boy Cool T, but there's solo stuff happening right now. You know, it's the, the journeys, the journeys never end that, you know, um, you know, when people say to you, well, don't you think this should have happened by now in your life? And don't you think you should be doing this by now? 
it's like, no, if I was meant to be doing that by now, I would be doing that right now. You know, um, but these things, the perseverance, we didn't know, we didn't know we were going to be this huge. We didn't know we were going to be the, the template you know, for the, for the, for the R&B-esque, pop R&B-esque boy bands that were coming out of the UK. We didn't know that. You know, you don't know that you're going to achieve all of these things when you start. You just have this mindset. Our mindset was firmly stuck on Jodeci, um, New Edition, Guy, you know, um, Hammer. I got to audition for Hammer, you know, um, New Power Generation, you know, all these things that came in as well as the... Um, as, as the singers, their influences from Michael to, oh, Teddy Pendergrass to, man, I just go on, I just go on. <laughs> Al Green, you know, just, just a little bit, you know, all of those things. And we're saying, well, you know, we're gonna, I'm gonna package that and I'm, we're gonna be as, as slick and as cool as the Temptations, you know, or the Dells, you know, um, but we're gonna keep it street. We're gonna keep this, you know, subtle uniform thing happening because, you know, it's, we're not wearing suits anymore. We're wearing, we're in street gear now, you know, and we're flexing like that. And so we went to extremes of what we wore, we could afford to. Yeah, and, and that mindset of being inspired by those who are so great, I believe is what permeated through the band m &A. and um, we gave birth to something, you know, we gave birth to something, something beautiful when we did that in terms of how much we gave and told people that, you know, if we can do it, you can do this. You just need to dream hard. Just hold on, just hold on and keep doing it. Um, and then from there, after the band, um, I was getting into my acting, finally getting an agent, finally doing some stuff, you know, and then the pantos came up and uh, pantos are like Christmas shows in the UK. And so they'll do a show like Aladdin. And so a guy or a girl will dress up like Aladdin and um, this genie will come out, which was me for a couple of years, you know, and it's really fun. Um, Aladdin's mother, um, it would be played by a guy, you know, big rosy cheeks and he play, it's all for laughs and pies in the faces, all that types of stuff, you know, family entertainment. And then two years after that, doing the genie, I did Dick Whittington, which is about this, this country boy who goes to London seeking his riches and fame and falls in love. And there's an evil, evil baron and he casts spells and all that type of stuff. But on that journey, he meets a cat. And that would, that would be me. <laughs> I'll be the cat. So, um, and he spoke like that. So, <laughs> so, so, and so from there, I was mixing the physical performance of Charlie Chaplin and The Mask. Um, I was mixing um, uh, the sentimental innocence of Donkey, which made it easy because I had I had these ears, you know. Um, and I was mixing that with cat behavior, you know. So I was doing that, you know, day in, day out. Did that, end up doing that for five years, you know. Not constantly, but just every Christmas, yeah, annually. And um, one of the guys who was working there, working on that, you know, Brian Herring, who ends up working on BB-8, says, oh, you know, um, Neil Scanlon, you know, I mentioned you to Neil Scanlon, he wants to see. So I'm thinking, nah, I'm, I know what it is, but I'm just thinking it's casting. All right, cool. Just go and play. Just be cool, be cool. And I was doing fine being cool until I actually worked, walked into the creature shop and I saw R2 just sat there. <laughs> the real, <laughs> I said, the real part of you just just sat there and i had to wait for permission i i, I couldn't i had to wait someone had to give me permission to walk past it you know <laughs> you know and and justin said justin pitlecki you know he just he said yeah that happens to me too you know i've told this story a hundred times man but it's it's so it's so powerful in terms of the steps that were being made go getting into that studio i thought i was going for casting no, we went straight into fittings, you know, and things worked out. Things just changed, you know, and at one point they said, okay, no, we're going a different way with the character. So, you know, we'll see what we can do, D. And I'm like, yes, if I've gotten this far to be seen by Star Wars, then yes. I didn't think, I didn't think, I didn't think for one moment that they'll come back. I think that was my one shot. I thought at least I was seen, you know, um, that's all I want. I want that fair shot. 
And um, but that's also the other thing. Coming from m and I, I, I could have got myself a press agent to say, oh, D from the band and blah, 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 and this, this, and that. I'm like, no, man. I'm, I, I really have this thing for earning my stripes and earning my place, you know, and being um, respected for who I am genuinely, you know, and as a performer and as an artist. And I didn't think I would be able to do that if I went around telling everybody, oh yeah, yeah, remember that band? I used to be in that band. So I didn't say nothing. And, and to this day, some people are still finding out, you know, it's not something I bragged about on set, you know, but people that know me, they know, and it's cool. But in terms of, that's the reason why you, the only reason why you know about me is because of the press that I've been doing. Not because I have a press agent, <laughs> yeah? But, but like I said, it's an Idris Elba thing here, right? So this thing about me um, wanting to earn my stripes, it means that when I can achieve these things, when I do achieve these things, they're my own victories. Yeah, because those victories, and I have to appreciate those victories because those victories have to subdue and nullify all the negative that's, that's in your wake, that's been trying to hold you back and trying to hold you down and say, no, you know, no, it's not going to happen. It's not this, not this. And trying to push you in another direction. Oh, it'd be easy if you just did this TV show. But no, 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 no. If I did that TV show, it would take me too far away from where I want to be and that's in film and that's doing this type of stuff. Um, those types of decisions, you know, are, um, I believe what helped to define us. And we, and we have to make them on a daily basis in whatever career we, we're doing. But the decisions we make from the time we make a decision to get out of bed, you know, what am I going to do with this day? You know, how am I going to seize this day? You know, um, or how am I just going to play um, Destiny 2 so this day goes a little bit quicker? <laughs> you know? <laughs> but, you know, it's... That's, that's, that's the journey, you know? And then when I was on set as Kratinus, for me, it wasn't like a sure thing. You know, things can end up on the cutting room floor. So it was still an audition. And also in keeping everything animated with Kratinus because of his expression, it meant that I could practice, Tom and I could practice our interactions. Um, uh, while at the same time getting us all juiced up for when, for when JJ says action and all I've got to do is ah! <laughs> you know oh Mark Dodson does my voice yeah Mark Dodson does the voice of Kratinus and Mark Dodson does the voice of the Gremlins wow see it just keeps giving right so and, and you know and i found that out late in the day and at the time i thought oh yeah that's our voices like, no nah, that's mark's voice gremlin's voice you never sound that good d <laughs> you know <laughs> i don't want to cut you off but my instagram is about to stop the live so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna okay. save this restart it send you another link and then we can do a part two okay all right cool all right cool, cool, cool. all right i had to sit down my back was killing me. I I'm sorry, y'all. I'm so sorry. I know this is gonna be a good one. Yeah, yeah. That's that's, that's why that's why I got this 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 nice little soft little sofa right here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I I had to sit down. It was it was it was killer. But now we're back. All right. So you were saying you remember? Yeah, it's 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 this um just the journey of getting there and like Mark Dodson doing my voice, the things just keep giving, you know, and um, that performance that many of us gave in Maz's Castle um, is I, I, the reason why we ended up doing so many more Star Wars movies, you know, with, with the team. Um, but yeah, it, it, that's, that's that journey. That's how, that's how that happened. You know, um, and then it's just been, you know what it is? It's justifying why you needed to be in the room, you know, um, and you bring your A game, you bring everything that you've learned, everything that you've, you've, you've studied or, or looked at, you know, so when I'm in these creature suits, 
it's not too alien, regardless of what alien they are, you know. Um, there is an understanding of so many things, managing the heat, managing your breath, managing your sight, managing your hearing, you know, uh, that if you can't handle that, you know, then you, it limits what you, be, you can be called out to be and used for. And, and everybody, everybody is just so on it and tries to be so on it every single time, you know? So it's kind of, yeah, it's getting to that point and being able to appreciate that the way that it is. Yeah. I'm so happy that you've been able to experience this, this, this journey. Sorry. Hold on. That's just, okay. Yes. <laughs> well, bye. Anyways, that's my little brother. Anyways, I apologize. Okay. <laughs> a lot of people, I was like, ugh. Anyways, but I'm just so <laughs> glad to hear that you're so, how you got started in this. And you worked with Janet Jackson. You toured. That is so cool. Like, that is amazing. And now you're still doing these great things. I know you talked about in one interview, like, you got to meet Mark Hamill for a little bit. And you got to see Harrison Ford on set. Like, that is just amazing did you get to first solo did you get to work with uh alden anreich as han yeah of course of course <laughs> he's, one of the, he's one of the sweetest guys one of the sweetest guys ever um and you know i remember introducing myself to him and he already knew who i was you know which is just like oh uh, well, okay you know and and that's not because i'm anybody it's because he knows who he's working with, you know, he'll do his homework, you know, and it was, um, oh, I was, yeah, it was an honor to work with that dude. He's so, so cool. <laughs> um, but, but also a concert, yeah, a consummate professional, so dialed in, so dialed in, you know, he had that down, wow. you know, I remember, I remember standing, I remember goosebumps again, so I'm going to say, I'm going to say something deep, right? <laughs> so, so. <laughs> okay. I remember being in my hotel room, you know, and just have, just ha after having the worst experience in some kind of restaurant, you know, um, and there was metal in the food and, and from some kind of tin can and, and they were wondering why I wasn't going to pay for my food. So after, after that, I got home and I was, got back to the hotel. I was just like, man, Phew. and then it was just like, but today I did get to stand in a lineup with my gun, with my blaster drawn on Han Solo, <laughs> Beckett, and Kira, and Chewie, you know, and in that lineup, when you see them, when you see the cloud riders just stood there, I know what you're talking about. You know exactly what you're talking about. That was that felt as epic as it looked, you know. And I remember the takes, you know, and. And he would just deliver every single time, you know. They were just they were just doing it, man. It was just and all we had to do, all I was doing with the mask on was going, wow, wow, wow. <laughs> you know. Um, but yeah, those solo was was an absolute joy to shoot. Um, I got to I got to meet Woody Harrison, you know, uh, as you do. And and the first thing I ask him about is, you know, will there be um, a zombie land too, you know, and he's saying, Oh yeah, they're thinking about something. Less than less than two months later, he already knew they were thinking about something, you know? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> but um and and um oh and uh, yes, yes, uh Amelia was I was gonna call it Kira. Amelia was awesome, Phoebe was awesome. Um just but what do you expect? You know, everything is everything was just awesome on on, on solo. It was just nuts. How could it not be? Ron Howard, John Kasdan, Melvin Falcon. I'm on Kessel. I run Kessel. This is my place. Yeah. Chewie's there. Han's there. They're in shackles. Good. I'm gonna I'm gonna make them a part of this part of this base too. Yeah. The other ones are oh, they'll be easy to take. Yeah. Just come with me. What? Come into my office. I've got droids everywhere. People that I love and know are in these droid suits and operating these droid things. And it's my house. <laughs> right? So, you know, and then next thing happens, you know, um, we have to facilitate the story. 
you know, I'm not sure what happens after that, actually. I, I kind of turn the movie off after that because that's where it ends, you know. You know they're, they're enslaved. They're enslaved. That's the end of the movie. Woohoo! <laughs> I can't, I can't with you. I can't, I can't, I can't. I just. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> see that that that's what that's what was going through Quay's head. That's see Quay Quay was up there, all right? He was up. There. Were you aware of the Pikes lore and like the Clone Wars before you got to work as him? <sighs> yeah, but but it took me a minute to work out that that's what it was. You know, I'm like. It took me a minute to realize the part that they were giving me, you know, because um, it was only a couple, a couple of days away or a couple of weeks away when they'd already fit and measured everything for me. Um, bless you. And um, and so uh, as I started to delve into who this who this guy was, and then I find out from Jake Lund Davies who designed this this version, well, the version now. Um, he said, yeah, yeah, based him on the pikes. And he started showing me the drawings. I'm like, I know the pikes. I know the pikes. So, um, so yeah, the, the mannerisms are there. If you, if you look, you'll, you'll see some of the mannerisms. The way I hold the keys um, is my way of keeping the, the elbows in and the hands out, you know, because of how they stand. Um, and then also the way that he moves when he's talking to, when he's talking to Kira. You know, and then that classic moment when he's turning the turning, closing the door, and he just goes like that, just does that, just, you know. And you know, I put that. It's like I can put these things in, you know, because it's part of the character. Character. It's not like I just jump into it. I say, oh, and I'm going to do this. So I, I put it in um, based on what I know or how I feel the character um, wants wants to move or play, and and hope that some of it sticks, you know for um, Destiny Destiny 2 Forsaken, um, the sequence with um, Cage 6 and Petra leading into that, that battle, you know, um, that I had no idea was gonna happen. I didn't even know about Cage 6, didn't know anything about it, just doing this thing. I threw in a Han Solo reference when he's climbing up and you see the hand come up and then he climbs up on top. You know, it was, it was a Cade thing to do, but it was a Indiana Jones thing to do. You know, you, you do these things, you just, Give what you what you can and what's inspired you to get to this moment in time. Like I said before, you know they'll just get you to do something. Say action. <laughs> you just gotta know. Okay, well I'm a droid, all right. You know, it's just it's just like that. Did you get to meet Nolan North for Destiny Two? Because I know he does the voice. No, no. Um, and I think I think I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Um, what the situation was, but they needed to shoot something. Um, they needed to, to shoot that section, and it got um, licensed out to to Pinewood, you know. Um, and it was that, that's just that's just a dream and a joy because obviously now I'm I'm playing the game hard, you know. Um, I know all about Cade and stuff like that. I don't know too much about the law, but I'm enjoying the game, and um, just to be a, just to a bit a part of that production because that's just epic they're getting ready to drop the next season now like season of the witch queen look at me advertising for bungie all right <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i've got nothing to do with it i'm not even in it <laughs> all right <laughs> but but um but yeah you know um i always wanted to be part of a game or do something motion capture for a game didn't realize it was going to be this always wanted to be in movies didn't realize it was going to be this you know it's they're, they're good realizations to, to get to, <laughs> you know. Hey, well, I do hope you get to meet Nolan one day. That's a, that's another like. I, I'm, I'm hoping. I, I hope one day they call me to do some more work, man. I'd love to do some more stuff for them. You know, um, totally fun. It's an incredible experience. Like you're on this map. And they've got this grid above you with these lights on, and then in the distance you've got this massive LED screen, and the and whatever character is you're playing, like Cade Six, he'll be stood there. I'm in my suit. I raise my hand. He raises his hand. I'm like, I've never looked so cool. <laughs> right? And it's just the most beautiful experience. It's just fantastic. A cool looking character too. And speaking of looks. 
to go back to Solo, when you saw the costume, what was your reaction to looking at it and then also them putting you in the costume? Um, for Quay? For Quay, yes. Um... Like I said, it was a gradual process. You know, everybody's, everybody's on a need to know basis. You know, D, all you need to know is we're putting this suit on you. <laughs> but what, who, what, how, when am I putting it on, right? It's like, okay, so he'll appear. I, did, I just thought he was some guy gonna be working in, in the factory or something like that. Just, okay, so I'm wearing a suit. It's the suits you get, you know, um, it's interesting. It's really interesting because I really do. I, it's like when they say, out of all the other creatures you've seen about, who would you, which suit would you like to wear? And I think my answer is the same answer most CFX team would give. It's, no, I just want to wear my own. There is, there is this instant attachment you have, this symbiotic thing, you know, um, that connects you to each, each character that you play. Um, what was your question again? <laughs> oh, no, so like, what was your reaction to seeing the costume? Like, well, oh, oh, no, well, see, because it was a gradual thing. That's what I'm saying. Well, because it was a gradual thing, the importance of it, you know, the design of it, the quality of it, you know, uh, and then you, you slowly hear the term, it's a hero suit or it's a hero head. And then you know, oh, okay, so there's got to be some major close-ups. It has to withstand some, some major zoom in and zoom out or tracking in or tracking out you know um but featured moments so yeah i might end up in this one you know um nothing being guaranteed and then yeah and then you just find out there's a bit more to it and a bit more to it and a bit more to it and by that time i'm already dialed in you know because as soon as i know it's a pike and as soon as i know they've given him they've given him the keys to hold they didn't tell me how to, they don't tell you how, like I said, they don't tell you how to do these things. They said, okay, and he has some keys. Okay. <laughs> I could have just had them <laughs> just swinging them around, you know, or, or, or strutting in, just twirling, you know. <laughs> but but then, you know, you dial it back and, you, and you, you understand where you are. You understand what universe this is, you know, and you just... That entrance just, was just so wonderful. cool too when he's walking out with the guards side by side. Oh! Oh, I couldn't have thought of a better entrance for that character. So cool. I love I love that. You know, one of the best things about being being a CFX performer is that when you look at yourself on the screen, you are telling yourself, that's me in that suit. Your brain and your eyes are saying, uh-uh. And that's when you're able to grab that distance. And you, and you can look at the performance objectively. You know, sometimes like, yeah, I could have, I could have looked more to the camera. Or I could have stopped having this ring light effect on my glasses happening 24 7, you know. Um, but uh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, I don't know, yeah, it, like I said, it's serendipitous for everyone involved, right? Because everybody is just so dialed in, everybody just, just gets it. There's very few people that are stuck and say, how am I supposed to do this? What am I supposed to do? What do you want me to do here? I'm, it's just all in, you know. Obviously, Solo, of course, went from Phil Lord and Chris, Chris, Chris Miller to Ron Howard. Um, what was your reaction to finding out that it was switching over from a, from a director that you originally had worked with to now Ron Howard? Seriously, I just thought, I've got more days filming. <laughs> you know? I'm like, I've got more days filming and I've just worked with these two legends and now you're telling me Ron Howard's turning up? I'm just like, wow, this is going to be an epic, epic either way. You know, and um, it was, it was, it was really bizarre in a sense that it was just so gentle and just everyone was just kind of with it you know and the first thing one said was you know the transition's been smooth and everything like that and explained what he wanted to do and how what he was going to be shooting and how he wanted to shoot about the, the fight out castle and things like that um joking that it was only going to take a couple of days you know <laughs> and that fight you know that took, that took a while but um that whole experience 
going through something like that and remaining professional and sincere to what all of those directors wanted and what Star Wars wants. You know, there is this symbiotic understanding of we'll get there. We just have, you know, it might it might take a few nudges, might have a few bumps, but we're going to get there. You know, um, it might take a few saga movies for us to realize, you know what, let's just do the Mandalorian. <laughs> you know? Silly. <laughs> you know, but, but, but each one of those things are significant stepping stones. You know, Star Wars don't reboot. You know, they don't reboot. They didn't even start with episode one. Right. Yeah. So, 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 how can you, how can you say, well, that season ended like that, or why isn't it like this? What, what happened here? Well, you didn't answer this question. Well, that question may come in the next movie, which might be four or five years away. May come in the next episode. It may come in another. It may come in somebody else's storyline. That's the nature of Star Wars. That's what it does. You know. So, yeah. When I watch it, man, I'm just, <laughs> I'm still, I'm still twelve, man. I'm still twelve. You know. I still love it, and and I've got to give a shout out to um, Chris um, Chris Bartlett, you know, and Rachel out in LA, and Misty Rossa, um, who are who are giving the most magnificent performances. You guys are enjoying watching um, the Book of Boba Fett and the Mandalorian. You, these performances are stellar and significant to each and every scene. You know, you've got memorable characters. You know that these guys, are, these guys are performing, um, and they have the same heart as I do. You know, so you know, you know when you're in good company because it's family. It just feels like family, um, without making it sound too cheesy and things like that. But it sincerely is because of these moments. They are they're deeply profound, and somebody else's journey might be more epic than mine. You know, or just as epic. You know, um, but we're all in it together, and 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 there isn't any better place you'd rather be. It's like sometimes I'll get castings for other things, and then I don't get it, and then I'm just like, I don't even know the name of your company. I can't even pronounce the name of your company. <laughs> yeah, and I'm getting hired <laughs> by by Disney and Lucasfilm, not regularly enough, but I'm getting hired by them, <laughs> right? <laughs> you know, so. The magnitude, the magnitude of our hopes and dreams and, and things like that don't really have any, don't really have any bounds, you know, um, just as long as you can appreciate them. You know, you never know when that, when that dream that comes around the corner is going to be, you know, the only one you're going to have, you know. Um, and fortunately for, for, for most of us, it, it never is just, just the one thing. It's just so many. Um, and so many things that, that turn you in a slightly different direction. You know, I'm a creature performer now. I wasn't when I started out. I was an actor before. <laughs> you know, now it's just like, well, I, I can act out of a suit. You know, they said I can. They left my pitman, my image on the screen, <laughs> right? So I'm like, okay, okay. So I'm, I'm doing something. I'm doing something. Okay, I'm doing something good. Um, but look, even even the Last Jedi, I play slow and low in the Last Jedi. Um, voiced by Joseph Gordon-Levitt, who uh, has teamed back up with Ryan Johnson, you know, and I had just seen Brick, that movie, uh, a week or two before starting filming, and just the, the filming lesson, just, just, just the production lesson that film gave, you know, was, was incredible. And then, you know, they named Slow and Low after a Beastie Boys track. What am I supposed to say? <laughs> right. You know, um, thank you. <laughs> you know, but it's, I, th I, th I think these moments are a little bit of the give back. So if I can give my love to these productions and things like that, then that love will flow in some magical, mystical way back to me, I guess. You know, um, I have to accept it like that. You know, because those things do charge and lift and boost, um, especially in this industry. You know, 
where you don't know where your next acting job's coming from. You don't know um, if a series is going to come along. You don't know if um, a trilogy of films is going to come along where you're going to be given consistent work. I think one of the icons or the icon that I look up to the most when it comes to creature performing is Doug Jones. You know, because... Uh, I love... <laughs> The maestro, the maestro himself, you know, yes. I've got, so, I've got so much love and respect for that man. Um, just from what I see and from what I know and, and, as, and been in touch with him as a person, um, to then see the mastery of his work on the screen, you know, uh, I, you know, there are things that inspire me that he does, like things that will trigger things. Like if I've got hand movements to do you know uh i instantly think of doug jones and then that ties me into channeling well doug jones would do that because i know doug has the same training so it's going to come from a place which is natural and expressive and just enough for the camera just just to pick up on it just a little bit you know um and i i, I can channel things like that you know through what i'm doing through people that I admire the most and he is up there he's he's totally up there because he's now landed the reoccurring role of any creature performer's dreams you know and doing it so magnificently and the writing on star trek you know is this total discovery is oh talk about crying oh my goodness yeah i forgot about that show <laughs> 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 right look now every five minutes i'm watching i'm watching discovery and i'm like oh man they just need a hug they just need to hug it out they just, they just need a but 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 I'm genuinely like feeling, feeling that <laughs> yeah yeah but, but genuinely feeling that way so so i'm i'm sensing a, a trend with me in terms of, of what shows have emotional content and and weight um and and yeah, I forgot about Discovery, but Discovery and and the Mandalorian series have have really sh shaken me in terms of family entertainment, wholesome family entertainment in regards to um, how uh, someone has love for a child, whether it's their own or whether it's a pet, you know, uh, just. It, like for example, Ahsoka's sitting there talking, just communicating with Grogu in season two. He's pacing in the background like a dad, and I'm bawling. Like, look how much this man cares. You know he, you know, and and he's you know, he was supposed to be fighting her. He thought he's gonna fight, but he's, he, his main goal has always been just to take care of this kid, and um, with very little dialogue. <sighs> They got me crying. I'm, I'm tissues, tissues. And let me pause this. Let me pause this. Wait, what? <laughs> you know, and and you realize you feel exactly. You would feel exactly the same way. You know, it's that's powerful stuff. It's powerful stuff. And I think for children of twelve years old, who it's it's generally aimed at, and for those who enjoy it in their senior years, <laughs> you know. Um, that's that's what that love is for Star Wars. It's one hundred percent sentimental, you know, from the very first one you watch, you know, to the latest one they they have beef with, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so, but it's 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 just, yeah, yeah, it is what it is. <laughs> You've honestly had such a great career, but I was wondering as I was looking through your IMDb. It says you weren't on the rise of Skywalker. I was just wondering, how come you weren't a part of that uh, project? Because you've done like a majority of the movies. That was the only one you didn't do. Yeah. Um, at the time, it was to do with um, suits and who was who was going to wear what suit and who was going to be featured and who. And, they were, and I don't think there were enough featured characters as such as to to warrant. Um, a great number of us returning back to do do little bits. So if you watch that movie, there's very few of us in there. You know, you'll spot um, Nick Kellington as Claude. You know, um, 
and and a few others and, and things like you'll see them dotted about but uh there really wasn't anything in there for me and that was that was at the time was tough for me to hear that I was like man I'd, I'd be a stone I'd be a tree you know <laughs> the tree's curly got, as as the tree on Exegol <laughs> I got you know I, I'm I've been working at my my creature performing and I think I can move to to plant I think I can move that <laughs> you know I think I can do that you know um it was tough but that that's when I took that leap for myself and I went and visited my friend Chris and Rachel out in LA you know and and M Mando was already a production so Chris was back and forward on that type of stuff but it was being around such creative like-minded people you know um that you could relate to in terms of uh your love for Star Wars love for the industry um and entertainment and things like that so uh and also where I found out that to work in LA there's a specific visa that I actually need so I'm actually halfway through my visa you know and then COVID hits and then this is like uh, so, I'm, so technically I'm still in limbo I'm halfway through um and it's pen, depending on dependent upon me getting a job offer and stuff like that so when the job offers come in from any studios like that over there they don't even have to pay for my visa I'll pay for it I'm there. I've got a visa for what three years rather than six months. I'm good, you know. So, so that's so that's sitting there. So that's sitting there, floating there. So, so you know, who knows what will happen, man? You never know. I might turn up in something someday. <laughs> oh man, I but love it's... that. There's so much out there. I mean, we had we have Ahsoka, um, Kenobi's. Well, you'd have to have done that a while ago. But Kenobi's coming out. Then we have. The acolytes i mean there's just so much stuff in the works that i could really see you in i mean of course we still have feature films coming out at some point so there's a lot of star wars content coming that i hope to see you in man I, I would love yeah to and it's and, and nothing's nothing's guaranteed but you know with all of us in cfx man you know we we, we keep these things crossed we keep these things crossed um most definitely but you know there's 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 beautiful things happening um i remember always wanting to be a part of um, Harry Potter in, in some way, shape or form, you know, and I just signed my contract on Solo and uh, had my agent have got that call for something to do with Fantastic Beasts. And I, you know, there was, there isn't a better project I could have turned down Fantastic Beasts for than, than a Star Wars project, you know, um, I have a profound amount of love for Harry Potter and Lord of the Rings, um, you know. And if I was work, see, look, if I was working on, no, no, I was going to say it the other way around, but no, that takes like, <laughs> I was going to say if I was working on the Harry Potter Star Wars called, would I be gutted? I'd be like, yeah, just a bit, <laughs> just a bit. <laughs> but yeah, it's yeah. It, but look, everybody's dreams are coming true everybody's dreams are, and you just just look around you know um things that marvel are doing you know <sighs> uh -huh. you know at dc dc are still finding their way you know and they may warner may have issues with Zack snyder but dc fans don't have problem with Zack snyder you know, Talk about, you know yeah yeah <laughs> or 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 the heroes themselves in general you know so DC, I think DC are gonna gonna grow, gonna take some leaps at some point. At some, but they have to, they have to. Um, and the best platform to leap from was Zack Snyder's. Or that's all I see, Zack. You know. Um, but for for Marvel, yeah, they've got they've got so many fans of so many different ranges of comics. You know that it's gonna be interesting to see because you know when I was a kid. I'll go into the comic book store, I'll pick up Spider-Man. Spider-Man and leave, <laughs> right? Sometimes I'll pay, right? <laughs> no, I would not pay. <laughs> no, I would, I would, I would. <laughs> Right? But, I, I, but it's just Spider-Man, yeah? Um, wouldn't be interested in Avengers, anybody else or whatever. They made all of that stuff interesting for me. 
yeah, it made it a real beautiful story and, and journey for understanding all of that. Um, um, you know, I'll sit on the fence when it comes to She-Hulk and things like that, because I don't know those characters at all. You know, uh, don't know the Eternals well enough to have, to know what the hell was going on with that. Um, but the Indian guy was funny. <laughs> the two of them, the two of them, two, two Indian guys. You know, um, I think that's what the story was about. It's about those two, wasn't it? Um, but yeah, but, but I, that's all I know. That's all I know. But I know that there are thousands upon hundreds of thousands of people that are into Squirrel Girl and things like that. <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll give it a shot. <laughs> right? Moon Knight's coming yeah. out in March with Oscar Isaac as, as the main, as Moon Knight. Yeah. See? See? Uh, yeah. See? Now, now, um, co comics and cosmetics. Cosmetics and comics. The comics and cosmetics run by Danny on YouTube. Um, she did this this an interview with me, but then she also did one on Moon Knight. So I was I was boning up, just listening up on 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 that whole story. Um, but um, yeah, she's been introducing me to a lot. That's what she knows a lot about all those characters and comics and things like that. So it's been amazing. But yeah, and and, and Morbius. Forgetting about Morbius. Forgetting about Blade. Blade. Oh, Blade. Blade. Oh, I can't wait. Ah, oh, that's gonna be killing. And and I'm really dying to see a really good Fantastic Four movie. I'm, I'm, and I think I think I think you know what? And I think Marvel are playing it smart too. Let, let's just talk for a second. I think Marvel are playing it smart. You know why? Because they're holding on to Michael Jordan. Yeah, they're holding on to Michael Jordan, right? They're holding on to him. Yeah, so that he can't go and do any more Fantastic Four movies while he's under contract to Marvel. So while he's under contract to Marvel, maybe that contract with Sony will run out. And then once it's run out, they can't make a Fantastic Four movie because they have, they've they run out of time to do it, they summed it, and they don't get well, Michael. So if they're not gonna get Michael, then what's the point? Marvel, take it back. That's what I'm seeing. I, I'm, I, I what I'm know seeing. that uh, John Watts is making the uh, the newest one, and I'm interested to see what he does and how. I mean, we're getting King the Conqueror now, so that's going to be so interesting to see what they do with um, Jonathan Majors as that character. That's going to yeah, be yeah, 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 yeah. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's going to be amazing. Ugh. So look, I mean, they've got stuff coming, but also these individual um, live action comics and things like that, they are dream come true to, to certain members of the audience, to certain people of production who work on these things. It's all a dream come true. And, and it just seems to be this, there's, there's a lot of it, there's a lot of dreams coming, coming true that are paying off. You know, um, being a part of any one of these movies, whether you're a fan of Wonder Woman and end up in Wonder Woman, you know, um, uh, I want Superman. I want Henry Cavill so bad. I want, you know, what, what's the news on that? You must have an inside track. Is there? Is there? Is he coming back for more? <laughs> I wish I knew, man. I oh. oh, I wish. But yes, I need Henry Cavill back as a Man of Steel too. I, I do, and it, yeah. it it just feels crazy to um. I know today they showed off stuff for the Flash movie, which looks very bad, but that's my opinion. I do not think the Flash movie looks pretty, pretty eh right now, but I know we saw okay. stuff, stuff for Is that. it a movie or is it a TV series? No, it's a movie coming out this year, The Flash. Oh, oh wow, okay. On Flashpoint, okay. Yeah, and then we, uh, we got Batman in a couple weeks. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Look at the smile on your oh. face. <laughs> oh, that's been a kill. That's been a kill. Mm. March 4th. March 4th, right? Yeah, March 4th. Uh, I can't wait. Yeah, I, I enjoy Batman movies. Um, I used to be, I think, he was my second comic book character I used to buy. My first one was Superman. And then um, I, got, I got tired of Superman because the stories got boring when I was a kid. And, and people would just turn up and have kryptonite. I'm just like, oh, okay. Right? So, you know, and then, um, and then I dipped into Batman for a little bit. You know, and the writing hadn't reached the Frank Miller stage by that point. So I got, 
I got put up to comics for a little bit. And then um, I spotted this dude in some red, red and blue outfit or whatever, you know. And he was some kind of nerd and he wore spectacles and, you know. And from the very, well, like from the original drawings, I'm sure I must have some of those old comics upstairs. But um, from those drawings to then going into Todd McFarlane's artwork, you know, um, I, you know, I used to draw. I, I don't know, I used to draw, right? And then as soon as I encountered Todd McFarlane's artwork, I put the pen down. I said, well, what's the point? <laughs> right? <laughs> and um, that, you have no idea how much healing that gave me as a youngster. You know, I'd, I'd go and buy, um, I'd go and spend like 50, 50 pounds, like some real amount, a huge amount of saving on like a huge pile of, of, of comics. And I'd, um, I'd get through those in the summer holidays, um, combating like anxiety. I think it was anxiety I was combating. And it just kind of chilled me out, just kind of mellowed me out after reading those things, you know. Um, but yeah, that was my Spider-Man. That was my Spider-Man, but Todd McFarlane. Always, always the man, always the man up there. Yes. Well, now I want to get into the coolest part of my interview. It's called Weird and Wacky. Now, this is a segment where you have one minute to answer a series of weird and random random questions. No one has gotten to a record of 15 questions, although the t- current championship title holder is Simon Norfleet with a record of 14 questions answered. Do you think you beat him? Do the questions have to be correct? The answers have to be correct. That'd be prefer. <laughs> that'd be preferable. <laughs> we'll see. Let's all right. Let's see. <laughs> I'm no. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not feeling too brave about this. <laughs> okay, I'm about to start the timer in three, two, one. Longest time period without taking a shower. Two days. Favorite drink. Orange juice. Instrument you wish you could play? Saxophone. Least favorite brand of cereal? Uh, Frosties. Nastiest food you've ever eaten? Frosties. Favorite favorite album cover? Purple Rain. A song that you could play forever and never get tired of? Purple Rain. (laughs) Prince. Just (laughs) Prince's catalog. (laughs) Favorite movie as a kid? Beverly Hills Cop. Favorite Star Wars movie? Star Wars. Favorite TV show? Mandalorian. Actor you wish you want, actor you want to work with? An actor? Um, uh, Three. Ian McGregor. Two. Favorite dessert? One. Ice cream. Ah! D, you got 13. So close to Simon. Ah! So close, so close. <laughs> uh, no, don't worry. Next time I bring you on here, you're gonna get to 15 or maybe more. I got you. <laughs> you're gonna get it next time. <laughs> but now, I want to transition into my final question for you two. And just before I get there, it's just been such an honor to get to geek out and nerd out with you. Yeah, I mean, for real. Finale, and it's just been so much fun to get to know more about you. But my final question to you is. There's so much going on around the world today, as you know. If you were given a mic and the entire world, the billions, the billions of people on this planet could hear you, what would you say to people who are going through a difficult time, dealing with loss, dealing with everything around the world that just weighs down on them? What would you say to the billions of people around the planet? Keep moving forward. Just keep moving forward. There is... There is... Um no way you can take any steps back there is only forward motion that forward motion can be physical that forward motion could be um in your mind preferably the best place for it to start you know um things won't feel like uh they're changing but each day that you persevere each day that you get through each um hour that you find difficult um and and a struggle know that you can overcome it and know that you can, you have proof that you can overcome it because you haven't gotten this far in your life without having to overcome other obstacles, you know? And the only, the only one true thing that has happened um, that has gotten you to this point is that you kept moving forward. 
there is only one direction and that is forward, forward in motion and forward in thought. Your forward thoughts are always the highest thoughts that you can hold on to, highest thoughts that you can embrace. Um, negativity doesn't exist. You have the, the, the power that you have to control your optimism and your hope is totally within you. The moment you start to dip and doubt yourself, you doubt yourself when you doubt what it is that you are capable of doing. When you start doing that, it's a downward slide. That, that, that frequency resonates. Yeah, and that frequency will push away anything good that you truly and uh, want, even if it's help, you won't even see it. So staying in a forward motion, forward state of mind, you might even need to fabricate it, put on something that makes you laugh, put on Lauren Hardy, put on something, put on um, uh, white chicks, put on something, put on whatever makes you um, laugh, whatever gives you that um, joy of spirit and that joy and that lift. Even if it's a movie and, and, it's, and it's hard going, but at the end, the, the victory is so good, it pulls you out of your seat, yeah? If it means embracing and connecting to those things, do it, because those things are there to help you move forward, yeah? And, it's, and the company that you keep, even if it's just your own, you are the one that has to do all of the work and understand, just understand, you aren't here today from not doing any work. You got this. Wow. I need to write that shit down. I need to write that shit. <laughs> I'll send the clip and I'll send it to you. You can write it down verbatim and transcribe it. <laughs> but do you think but it's, so but, it's, but, it, but it's but it's but it's but it's true. And I and I see I see it whether people realize it or not, I see it around. I see it in you, I see it in the people that um, are starting brand new ventures. You know, um, I have to give a shout out to Force Geeks. I have to give a shout out to Cos Comics and Cosmetics. Um, I have to give a shout out to all these people that are um, taking that leap. Yeah, creating a show, you know, on, on Instagram or on YouTube. You know, taking the bull by the horns, starting up their new business. You know, finding some way to say to this world, no, you ain't going to break my stride. <laughs> ain't nothing going to hold me down. Listen to me quote some song lyrics. But yeah, it's just, <laughs> it, it's that. Even put on that damn song. If, it, if, you, if you're going to strut, strut to that damn song, you know, ain't nothing going to break your stride. No one can. You can. You can break it yourself. But why would you want to be a failure to yourself if you believe in yourself so much? And it's, and it's worth believing it. So, you know, it's tough, but there's only one motion, man, and it's forward. Dee, thank you so much for giving me the time. Is there anything you want to promote before we head off? Ah, uh, man, there's, there's, you know, projects I've been working on. Um, Arg and the quest for the golden dragon skull. It's like a um, a D and D um, stop motion ish um, comedy with Monty Python humor, written by Martin Gooch. And um, it's a pure joy. The cast are hilarious. We are in the midst of um, waiting on whether it's going to go to TV or whether it's going to be as a TV series or whether it's going to be a film or whatever, but it's there, that's in the can. Um, worked with some film students to create um, a film for these festivals um, called Stargazer. A beautiful, a beautiful story. I, when I saw the script, I was like, uh, how am I supposed to say no to that? All right, okay, yeah, yeah, I'll jump in it. And they delivered beyond measure and beyond belief. Arvin J and his his crew um, of geniuses, teenage geniuses, you know. Um, and uh, what else? Oh, you, yeah, yeah. There's some stuff coming this year. I don't, I'm not sure how much of a heads up I can give you about it, but there's some stuff coming this year. You know, I'll be sure to talk to you about that. Yeah, <laughs> oh, I can't wait. B, thank you so much. I have a couple of things I'm going to send you for as a token of my appreciation for joining me today. I also oh, want to bless send you. you. Yes, absolutely. I want to send you with this. You're an incredible human being and you have a bright future ahead of you. So keep going. Keep pushing. Here's to the next phase of your life. And cheers, man. It's like, yeah. Yeah, hey. hey, let's keep moving forward, people. Let's just keep moving forward. So much love. So much love. Absolutely. Well, thank I'll you, be John. in touch and I will see you next time, good sir. Have a great one, my friend. Thank you. All right, you too. Lots of love. Absolutely. Thank you.